Okay, lab 9, the configuration of shared storage. So we're continuing on from lab 8 with our iSCSI storage. However, currently we only have one pathway on switch 3. And that's one of the bad things with this is when we have storage that's not local, we want multiple pathways to the same shared storage. That way if there's ever a problem, we don't have to worry about it the equipment will take multiple pathways uh, to the storage as long as it's set up correctly. So that's what we're going to be doing now. We're on we're going to be doing this on ESXi 1 and you'll notice that vSwitch 1 only has one port. So we're actually going to be adding an additional port. Uh, notice again iSCSI 1. We're going to be setting up a secondary kernel called Oh, it helps if I spell it correctly, iSCSI 2. Uh, again, no VLAN ID, uh, ID, we're leaving the IP default. For the secondary path, we're going to... Oh, 168.3. We're going to be using 23 and 24 respectively. Uh, 23 for our ESXi 1, 24 for our ESXi 2. Two five five two five five two five five zero. But you'll notice that both of our adapters are still using our physical network four and five. And that's one of the other issues. Uh, we actually want to set it so that v uh, VNIC five is using iSCSI two and VNIC4 is using iSCSI1. And how we do that is, if we're looking at our configuration for networking, you can actually click on the vSwitch3 properties. That will allow us to select the two ports that we have. And we're going to go ahead and edit them. We're going to go down to NIC Teaming, and we actually want to override. We want it so that iSCSI 2 is using 5. Uh, we're going to put VNIC 4 as unused. You can set it as a standby. That way if one fails, this one will kick in. Just, but for our environment, we're not going that far just yet. We're going to do the same thing for iSCSI 1. Except this time, we, when we overwrite it, we want to leave 4 as the active adapter. That way, iSCSI 1 is using 4, iSCSI 2 is using RVNIC 5. But you'll notice here, it doesn't really show us anything. When we have to do this to the web interface, it will actually show you uh, the pathways. So iSCSI 2 is mapped to 5, iSCSI 1 is mapped to 4, and so forth. So now that we have this done, we're going to hop over to storage adapters. We should have one SCSI adapter for our optical drive, one for our local uh, hard drive. But where's our iSCSI SANS? So how we do that is we're going to go ahead and click on Add. It already knows iSCSI because our only other options are FCOE, Fiber Channel over Ethernet, and that's not a feature we get with the free version. Uh, we also don't have a fiber channel SAN, so we're not going to go into that either. So we're going to add a iSCSI software adapter. Since we don't already have one, it's going to let us know, we're, are you sure you want to add this? And yes, we are sure we do want to add it. It takes a second, but you notice it has the iSCSI pathway. But where are our LUNs? Where's our storage at? So after we set up our iSCSI adapter, we have to set up some storage. So how we do that is we go up to our storage tab. And we're going to add storage. The first ones we're going to be adding are going to be our disk LUNs. Because we want to add our two iSCSI LUNs first. You notice none are selected. 
if nothing is selected we may have to rescan a few times sometimes VMware likes to be a little bit more particular so if we are actually uh, going to set up our iSCSI adapter the first walkthrough I did it auto configured it for me this time apparently it doesn't like that so we're going to go ahead and edit some of its properties first thing we're going to do is select the iSCSI adapter go to properties from here we want to make sure that it's turned on it's enabled which it is we're going to do some network configuration what networks are we going to add? We're going to add both of our iSCSI networks that way our iSCSI ones will map correctly the dynamic discovery versus the static discovery sometimes you have to manually type in your LUNs depending on your iSCSI uh, SAN uh, here we're just going to type in our IP address of our iSCSI SAN which is also the IP address of our vCenter secondary NIC because that's the NIC for our iSCSI uh, if we had chap option you choose chap option and you just do whatever uh, password you have but we don't have one right now and that should be it once you close you have, might have to rescan iSCSI Occasionally you have to rescan because these won't get mounted correctly. And boom, both of our iSCSI lines are there. Sometimes it does it automatically, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, if it doesn't, just look at its properties and make sure it's adding the correct iSCSI ports. Once we're done with that, we're going to head up to our storage array. And you should not see any iSCSI storage arrays right now okay I went ahead and removed it because we shouldn't have been seeing that just yet I already did the walk through this lab once that's why mine was a ghost but when you go to storage you should only see our data store our local storage that's currently there what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some additional storage we're gonna add a disk slash LUN and you should notice both of our LUNs I'm going to choose the first one. Uh, what file system do we want to do? If you have older ESXi hosts, you might want to do uh, file system 3. However, all of ours is newer than 5, so we're going to do VM uh, file system 5. That's our LUN, that's our capacity, that's what's available. That all looks good. What are we going to call the first one? We're going to call the first one iSCSI1. We're going to uh, leave it maximum space. And in a second, it should populate. While it's populating, I'm going to be setting up our second LUN. Another LUN. I'm trying to work faster than the system. So once our first SCSI, uh, iSCSI LUN is populated, we'll add the second one. Again, another disk LUN. Our only other unmounted disk is already there. So that's the one I'll be selecting. Again, I'm going to be choosing File System 5. Make sure all of that that is correct. We're going to call this one iSCSI 2. We're going to manipulate this one so it's a slightly smaller. We're going to put this at 16 gigs. Verify all of that is correct, which it should be, and we're going to finish. Nice thing now is with these shared storage, once we add the storage adapter to our ESXi2, these are auto going to populate. We won't have to do anything to them. I have one more additional step in this lab before we get done and that's going to be adding additional storage but this time NFS that would be our network file system 
what's the server IP address. It's also the same IP address as our ICE SCSI SAN. That's just because that's where our NFS server is currently running. Remember that we named it NFS, all capital. We're going to call it NFS, again, all capital. It is case sensitive, so make sure that you pay attention to that. Verify that's all correct, and finish. You'll notice that this one has 13.2 gigs free. That is because on our hard drive, we have 13.2 gigs free. And that's really it, except uh, we have to do the same steps on iSCSI or on our ESXi2, but our iSCSI, we don't have to reset up because they should already be there. Just to make sure, I'm going to refresh. But they're not there. Why aren't they there? That's because we haven't set up our storage adapter yet. No iSCSI storage adapter. That's why our iSCSI lungs aren't mapped yet. So we're going to go ahead and add our iSCSI adapter. Yes, we sure we want to add it. I'm going to double check the properties just to make sure it's enabled. The network configuration wasn't auto detected. That's okay. But you notice they're not here. Why aren't they here? That is because we never set up both of them in our switch. We only did one. Everything is mapped together, so we, we have to keep that in mind. So if we skip a step, it does matter. And just like before, we want to edit them so that our NIC teaming 4 is going to be the primary or active NIC. And 5 is going to be the primary or active NIC for ISCSI 2. That way there is two pathways to our ISCSI for both ones. Again, you don't see any of this change, but they, there is a change. Now back to our storage adapter. Our iSCSI uh, adapter is there. Now we're going to make sure it's enabled, which it is. And we're going to go back to our network configuration. And notice now they're there. We're going to add both of them. Make sure the information is correct. It's all correct. And don't forget to add the dynamic discovery with the IP address of our SAN. And we should be able to rescan. And it found. That means that when we click on storage, our ISCSI SAN should be there, but they're not. If they're not there, just rescan them and they will populate. But notice our NFS did not. That's because that is not on our SAN. Granted, both of them are running on our vCenter server, but they're not the same type of software, and they're not the t uh, same type of storage appliance. Our SAN is a normally a dedicated hardware device that uh, is a storage uh, device. However, since we're using a software scan, it's making our vCenter server act like our server plus our SAN. Though it's not always like that in production. Our NFS is not a network uh, device. It is a share from a server. So that's why it's not shared or picked up automatically. So we have to recreate that one. So again, add storage, network file system, It's on 3.20. Again, NFS, all caps. We're going to call it NFS. 
but that way we can save something to NFS and all hosts will be able to see it. NFS is centralized storage on a server. iSCSI is centralized storage on a SAN. They are slightly different and there are pros and cons for each one of them. And double check that both have all four storage arrays. If you do not see your iSCSI uh, LUNs, rescan. If after rescanning you still don't see them, double check that our virtual iSCSI software, Starwind, is running. Thank you. Have a good night.